In today's video, I want to share with you seven secrets to flourish from Psalm 23. And the first secret is don't welcome anxiety. Why is this such an important secret? Because you could easily fall into the lie of welcoming anxiety and feeling like it's normal like it's normal to be anxious but i feel like it's a dangerous thing to do if you take up a negative disposition from the starting of the year because it's like you are preparing to fail i understand the fact that a lot of things are happening around you and you may be experiencing some tough times but as a child of god and as a christian you are supposed to align your confession with God's word. And David said in this psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, this is why you should not welcome anxiety. Because there is a God in heaven who cares for you. God is not just far away, but he's a shepherd. I love the picture that David gave here. Because the shepherd always walks with the sheep. So there is this closeness, there is this intimacy, and there's this friendship between the sheep and the shepherd, which means God is so close to you as a friend, as a partner to help you. The word I shall not want is very deep. It says I shall not decrease. I shall not fail. Like whatever would make me smaller, the Lord is my shepherd. Because of this, instead of going down, I'm going up. I'm leveling up. Don't welcome anxiety. Any moment you allow anxiety to brood in your heart and take space, what it does is it brings you to this place of negativity. And by the time you start making negative pronouncements and proclamation, it starts affecting your perception about yourself and about God. Because you will not be able to believe God that he is able to take care of you. Every shepherd is responsible for the welfare of the sheep, which is to feed, to guide, and to shield. And you have a good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. It did not say I am a good shepherd, which means there are other good shepherds. This is very important. I am the good shepherd, definite article, which means apart from me, there is no other good shepherd. And it says the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. So I want you to allow this point to sink deep that Jesus is your shepherd and he cares for you. He has already laid down his life on the line so that you could live a victorious life. He said, I came that you and I may have life and that life more abundantly. He did not come to give us a meager life. He came to pour out life in abundance because before him, we were not living. And if you are living without him, you're not really living. You're just existing. By the time you live with him, that is when you find purpose in life. That is when life starts making sense. Secret number two, Find rest in God's direction and leading. Verse 2 of Psalm 23 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. In life, we always ask about where the grass is greener. We are always looking for greener pasture. In the career that you want to choose, in the decision you want to make, maybe in a relationship that you want to go to, the person you met before wasn't so good, so you're looking for a greener pasture, a better person a better version, an upgraded version. And the Bible says, God makes you to lie down in green pastures. And this is what I would say to you. Whenever you're looking for where the grass is greener, just know that the grass is greener where God lives. This is the only way for you to be in the right place at the right time. This is the only way for good to come to you. And scripture says that this God is the one that makes dry bones to live. So if God can make dry bones to live, it means even if you were to be in a dry ground, he can make dry ground become green pasture. Because where he leads becomes a green pasture. But if you are going without him, without his direction, without his leading, then you might think it's green pasture. But when reality hits, you realize that it was a facade of green pasture. And you don't have to believe in the facade of it. What looks like green pasture? You have to trust God to lead you to make you lie in green pasture. So wherever you think is green pasture, if God hasn't given you peace, then it's not where God wants. When God makes you lie down in green pasture, he will lead you beside still waters. What does still waters mean? Restful, peaceful waters, which means it is God's peace 
that actually makes you know that I am in green pasture. So it's like God saying, wherever I lead you, my peace will follow you. Secret number three, live for his glory. Why is this a secret? Verse 3 of Psalm 23 says, He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. That's the place I take the emphasis. Why is God good to you? Is it because you're good? No. Is it because you're such a great personality? No. Is it because of your popularity and fame? No. It's for his name's sake. He is a good God. That is why he's good to you even when you are not good. Because even scripture tells us that he is faithful when we are unfaithful. And the fact that we may not do right does not mean he will stop being good to us. That is why he allows the rain to fall for the wicked and for the righteous. But then you as a righteous person, you have an advantage. Because your case is treated exclusively. God will lead you, restore you, revive you because he is your strength. He is your source. And all of this is for his name's sake. He gives you his righteousness through Christ. Why? Not because you're good. He makes you to enter into the right path because he loves you for his name's sake. You live for his glory. You live to honor him. You live to glorify him. That is the secret to flourish. If this is encouraging you already, hit the thumbs up so that YouTube algorithm will share this message to a brother audience for other people to be blessed by it and it will also be your way of supporting me to keep on doing this so the life you live should not be about you but it should be to the honor and glory of god the things you do should not be about you because once you don't make it about you you'll be conscious that i'm not living for myself so when i want to do something i should ask god for wisdom to be able to do it right in a way that would honor him in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Number four secret, don't welcome fear. Verse four of this psalm says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I know somehow it's like a human thing that when people are going through hard times and difficult moments, they start feeling like, is God mad with me? Did I do something wrong? Did I offend God? No, God is not mad with you. Just because things are not going well, God is not angry with you. In fact, because of Christ, his anger for you has been dissipated. Christ has taken all the anger of God for you. In this dispensation, it is not God's anger. It is just because you are living in a broken world. So sometimes things might happen that might put you in a place of discomfort. And David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I'm threatened by death, though I'm feeling like I'm at the brink, I will fear no evil. So do not welcome fear, but have this assurance that God is with you. And say like David, I will not fear. I will not fear because I have a shepherd. I will not fear because I'm not alone. It's whatever situation or hardship or pain or situationship that you find yourself, it is not for settlement. It is a walk through. Though I walk through. It is a walk through. So consider everything you are going through right now that is making you uncomfortable as a walk through. I'm walking through this. I'm not remaining here. I'm not settling here. In fact, this new year, make that your declaration. Whatever I've passed through in the past year, I'm not settling for that. I'm not settling for the bad things that happened to me in the, my year. I'm not settling for the bad things that started to happen this beginning of the year. I am settling for good. God is with me. I'm walking through this. The fifth secret is be comforted in the Lord's discipline. Oh, this is not such a beautiful one, but it's a powerful secret. Because as a loving child, a father would discipline that child for them not to miss their way. And you have to understand God's discipline because if God disciplines you, it means he loves you. If he lets you to be, don't be glad. Don't be happy. That's a very bad place to be. Because scripture talks about such people in Proverbs and says that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end of it leads to death. So if God allows you to have your way, it might lead you to destruction. But if it disciplines you, it will lead you to life. So let this be your comfort. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. His rod is for your protection, which means that is his discipline. Don't spare the rod. So when God doesn't spare the rod on you, he is disciplining you. And now let me make this plain. God does not discipline his child with sickness. Neither does he discipline his child with accidents or pain and bad occurrences. That is not God. 
That is not from God. God cannot be tempted by evil. Neither does he tempt anybody. So James says, do not say that God tempts you when bad things happen. It is not from God. You might be going through trials and bad things have happened to you. That is not God's handiwork. Don't call that God's discipline. What then is God's discipline? God's discipline is in the form of the disappointments that comes your way. The frustrations that you don't have your way every time that you want it. Those are the parts that God brings his discipline to you. He holds you from getting into a place that you really wanted to go into because there's something he's protecting you from. He holds you and hides you for some season as a means of discipline to protect you. So be comforted when God is disciplining you. But please do not believe that when bad things happen, it is discipline from God. It's just like a loving father saying, I want to discipline my child because I've been telling you don't go out and you're going out every time and says, keep your leg here. Let me drive my car and smash your leg. Oh, 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 that's harsh. But that's how it is when you think that God will use accidents and pain to discipline you as a child. Sometimes our mistakes lead us to those places of pain. Our stubbornness leads us to places of trouble and chaos. It is not God's discipline. So I hope you understand what I mean here so that there will not be a misapplication of this. And then know that when God is leading you, he will discipline you and everything will not work the way you want. You pray, yes, he answers and hears your prayer. But the answer will not come the way you expect it to come. And when it does not, be comforted that God has a better way. Secret number six, prepare for the overflow. What is this overflow? This verse says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. It's an overflow. Your enemy could be sickness. And when God makes you live in an overflow of health, he has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. The sickness. Sickness is watching. The devil is watching. Be like, I can't even touch this child again. Like, look at how glowing this child is. So healthy. When poverty was trying to strike you and God makes you come to a place of wealth, you are in a place of overflow. And that's where God wants to lead you to. But you have to prepare for this place. In faith, believe God for the overflow. That's the preparation. Believe God to build capacity for the overflow of his blessings. Prepare for the blessings that God is bringing your way. Build capacity. Develop your skills. Sharpen your craft. Get ready for the overflow. You are waiting for God to expose you, to use you, to use your gift and your talent. You have to sharpen and develop the skills that you have. So that when the overflow comes, you can ride in that flow. You have to prepare. Because God is preparing the table. And the place of overflow is a place of satisfaction. The number seven secret is embrace the presence of the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, the first part of this is something that is a promise. You don't have to do anything for it. He said, surely. Surely means amen. Verily, goodness and mercy shall follow me. I love the word follow because it means shall pursue, shall hunt me down, shall chase me. So just know that good things, good relationships, good people, good uplings, and God's mercy, which is his kindness, his grace, will run after you. When God's grace is mixed with the good things of life, it comes to you. And for you to sustain these good things that God will bring into your life, you need to embrace the presence of the Lord. David said, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever because this is the place where I will always get wisdom to navigate through life. This is the place where I will be filled up to be able to make good choices, to be able to not trade the good things that God has given me for cheap things. I hope this video is a blessing already to you. If it is, share this video to other people. Give it a thumbs up. My name is Uwe Akpan. This is my YouTube channel. Do well to subscribe to this channel and I would love to hear from you in the comment section. Which of these points really resonated with you as you were listening? And how are you going to put these secrets to practice? Let me know down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share this video and see you in my next YouTube video. I like to start you when I'm going out. So take it.